Here we present a 61-year-old male with history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, type 2 diabetes, and end-stage renal disease with known central venous stenosis and multiple previous catheters. As you can see here, there are lots of uh, collaterals in the chest wall and the abdominal wall. He was currently using a left IJ tunnel dialysis catheter, but he presented with worsening of swelling of his face, bilateral upper extremities, and problems with dialysis using his current catheter. He also had a right upper extremity AV fistula that had started experiencing prolonged bleeding recently. The decision to take him to the operating room and perform a venogram with possible intervention was made and under ultrasound guidance his right axillary vein and right common femoral vein were accessed. We then exchanged uh, on the right axillary vein, the sheath for an 8 frame sheath, and in the right common femoral vein, as you can see here in this picture, uh, we used a 7 French aptus tour guide sheath. And here you can see a venogram taken from both exit sites, which showed an occluded superior vena cava, as well as a left IJTDC that ends up in the right brachiocephalic vein and was causing him problems with dialysis. Using multiple crossing catheters and wires, we were able to traverse the blockage in the superior vena cava, and using a clover snare coming from the right axillary vein, we were able to snare the wire and externalize it at both ends. Once we had completed that, we exchanged the soft angle glide wire for an amplets wire to give us more support and proceeded to perform the angioplasty of the previously occluded segment. Initially with an 8 millimeter balloon which was then upsized to a 12 millimeter balloon and then a 16 millimeter balloon. In here you see the 16 millimeter balloon used for the angioplasty of the superior vena cava, and then based on the initial venogram, we used a 12 millimeter balloon and performed angioplasty into the right brachiocephalic and right subclavian veins, as you see here. A repeat venogram showed that there had been some improvement in the stenosis in the superior vena cava as well as the right brachiocephalic and right subclavian veins, but there was persistent stenosis. So we opted to stent the superior vena cava portion. Based on measurements performed off of the venogram, we decided to use a 24 millimeter in diameter by 55 millimeter in length zenith endograft and after exchanging our 7 French sheath from the right groin for a 16 French sheath we were able to bring the stent into position as you will see in the next images. Once we had placed the stent in the appropriate segment we confirmed with the overlay of the venogram to ensure that we had uh, covered the stenotic segment and then deployed the endograft per IFU. In here you can see how each of the segments of the endograft are being released from the delivery system. Once the delivery system had finished deploying the stent, we noticed a stenotic segment persistent there. So we proceeded to recapture the sheath and performed a new venogram to evaluate that segment and to ensure that none of the tributary branches were covered during the deployment of the stent. We then uh, proceeded to advance a 24 millimeter balloon and perform angioplasty of the stenotic segment with great success. 
on a completion venogram, we were able to see that the previous stenotic SVC is now fully patent, but there was some persistent stenosis in the brachiocephalic veins as well as the right subclavian vein. So we proceeded and performed balloon angioplasty of the right side, as you can see here, with improvement of the stenosis, and then removed the left IJTDC that was in the right brachiocephalic vein and perform angioplasty of the left side as well. Continuing to the left brachiocephalic and left subclavian veins as well with good results as you will see on the completion venogram that shows very little reflux into the previous collaterals the patient did remarkably well. Swelling of his face, neck, and upper extremities improved significantly. And during the same procedure, he received a growing TDC. But the fistula in the right upper extremity with the prolonged bleeding was able to be used without any complications. And the TDC was removed shortly thereafter.